video on linear and exponential functions. We'll be looking at the differences be between them in terms of the graph, the equation, and the table. Notice if it doesn't fit any of these patterns or these types, it's going to go in the neither category. So we are strictly looking at linear and exponential. If we're looking at the graph of a linear function, this linear function is going to create a line or something that has a constant rate of change. It might also be like this. Right? All of these are linear functions. If we found the slope or the rate of change between each of them, it's going to be constant. Now, if we look at exponential, a couple of examples of exponential. Exponential function starts with a small rate of change and then it increases, or it starts with a very steep rate of change and then it kind of levels off. Those are our two most, uh, most common examples right here, but we also might have ones that look like this, or like this. Those are also possible. So there's a curve to them, there's a pattern, and when we look at the tables, we'll definitely be able to see that. All right, looking at the equation. If it's a linear equation, your most common equation is something that's in y equals mx plus b form. So negative 2 thirds x plus 1. The big thing here is when it solve for y, so when y is isolated, this x on the x is going to be a 1. Now, if it's not in this form, we could always solve it for y and then see if it has an exponent of 1. With exponentials, this function is going to have an exponent, and the exponent is going to be the variable. For example, 3 times 1 half, and that 1 half is being raised to the x. So the variable being in the exponent is so, so important. That's actually what makes it an exponential function in terms of the equation. So anytime we see an equation, if it has an exponent, the variable is the exponent, it's exponential. If we solve it for y, we can pull out the slope, and that means it's x to the first power. That's going to be linear. Now looking at the tables, linear, we refer to the constant rate of change here being the slope, constant rate of change being there on the graph. We also see it on the table. If we plotted these points, it's going to make a line. They're all going to be in the same direction here. Now, the other thing with the table is we're looking for a constant rate of change. So if we chose any two points, then we would find the rate of change between them. So 0 to 6 is adding 6. 1 to 3 is adding 2. The rate of change between those two points is 6 over 2, which is 3. Now, if I chose these, the first and the last point, 0 to 9, I added 9. 1 to 4, I added 3. 9 over 3 is also 3. So it's a constant rate of change. The rate of change is the same no matter what two points we choose. If we look at the exponential, the exponential function has a pattern as well. This time it's not adding and subtracting, though. It's multiplying. So if we look here, uh, for every one that we go up here, we're just going up one, okay, okay. So then six to 12, we actually multiplied by two. And then 12 to 24, we multiplied by two again. 24 to 48, we multiplied by two. So we're multiplying by two each time. So that tells us that's the, the common ratio. That's what we're going up by. That's what we're scaling by each time to get our next term. That tells us it's exponential. So kind of a quick recap, the exponential will have multiplication as a pattern. The linear will have more of an addition subtraction pattern, but really focusing on the constant rate of change. So based on this, if we're looking at a graph, an equation, or a table, we should be able to determine is it linear or is it exponential? And if it doesn't fall in either category, it's neither. Thanks for watching. Hope you tune in next time for the next video.